So yeah, Ubi Garage, uh, what we do here is we source, sell, trade uh, in rare design, vintage and streetwear. Um, so basically we uh, do the buy, sell, trade here, we take inspiration from people like Round 2, Wavy Dimes, Juice Covered. Um, and what we're about is basically creating the best possible vintage that we can um, so everybody wants to come here have a piece of history um, and also kind of like with the high-end collectibles such as Supreme and the Palace uh, and the Bay Bottoms as such and stuff like that basically. Brilliant yeah, yeah. and so with that Ellis what does Groovy Garage mean so what is the business itself? So the business in itself to us is an opportunity for somebody who maybe wants to get like get into fashion, wants to get into having ex accessibility of garments, um, maybe can't quite afford that high-end piece at like new cost, um, and then we bring a piece, a bit of magic, a piece of history from, you know, we've got items from the eight, like right from the 80s up to like late 2000s, yeah. um, and I just think that that gives an opportunity for... Yeah, I think it's what makes you unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah, 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 and it's like, it's, it, it becomes a more special shopping experience, and that's, that's what we want. We want anybody to be able to come in here yeah. and just like feel a vibe, feel comfortable. And, and just yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Brilliant. So, moving on, Ellis, um, how did Groovy Garage as such get its such really unique name as Groovy Garage? So, yeah, it basically started from back in 2017, 2016, 2017. Uh, myself and Jack, who I was in business with, we sort of really started to get into a London scene. I see. Uh, we took it, like I said earlier, we took a lot of inspiration from uh, Wavy Dimes, who are a London-based streetwear brand. Uh, they do a lot of styling now, uh, sort of come away from the Garms. So we basically got into that scene, which they had pioneered from you know, 2010 onwards, uh, which sort of really represented the whole UK garage scene. Uh, and the, the clothing that went with it, like your old school Moschino, your Versace. Yeah. And sort of like your retro came back as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. All your retro clothing. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and with that as well, what garments do you sell? Because I know you sell like jumpers, for example, and old uh, sort of nice high fashion style t-shirts but yeah. like what else do you sell as well uh so yeah we said i mean our main brands that we probably sell are stone island cp company you know they have a lot of history within a uk culture yeah um, and then we like move on to yeah like you said we sell our like branded sweatshirts but as creative as possible we like to like touch on real like high-end italian brands yeah um and that's kind of like where the passion's gone is high-end italian high-end japanese with a little bit of still that like true core of like the branded sweatshirts, the yeah, graphic t-shirts and stuff like that. And I think it's what's high in sort of English sort of fashion yeah, nowadays. Yeah, isn't absolutely. It? Yeah. Uh, sort of your, your baggy jeans, uh, your cargoes to your sort of nice retro Chanel jumpers as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So basically that is like where, so the, because there was such an in sort of representation on the garage scene yeah we wanted something that just rolled off the top yeah and sort of finding that, that garage like gap in the garage. market in a way. yeah yeah and it was the group that it was through the garage and, and we wanted something that you know just as well it, you know through the garage doesn't have to just always be guards no like, like if it was you know because we left it just as an open book yeah like, we couldn't move it onto anything so that's why we chose it as well. definitely yeah. Yeah. excellent brilliant so moving on ellis during your time during the pandemic, how did you cope as a business selling clothing? I know that obviously a lot of businesses uh, within different industries struggle, but sort of streetwear and fashion, how did yourself as Groovy Garage, uh, did you struggle hard? Was it quite hard hitting? Uh, initially it was, uh, it was obviously very scary. Um, but as soon as we seen that boom of everybody you know, sitting at home wanting to spend, spend, spend. We kind of capitalised on that. Yeah. Um, and basically just really focused on our online selling. You know, that's how we started. We were traditionally just online. Brilliant. So we had that, that skill set already. We had the website set up. We had the Depop set up. And we basically created a, we, we were doing weekly drops. And with our, with our Instagram following, we basically created a um, sort of, basically a hype around each drop. Um, so we were like making a big scene about each rare garment that we had yeah. uh, and we really created something in, in lockdown and it was exciting for people at home because they were like logging on at 7pm on a Wednesday, yeah. really trying to get that garment that they wanted, Definitely. that we were styling throughout the whole week, really pushing it. Um, and it became like a bit of a backwards and forwards with, the, with our customers and with our followers and yeah. it was really, it was a really, really almost enjoyable time, for, although it was a very, very dark time. 
we really capitalized on it and yeah obviously our followers sort of made that. the most of what you could do in the yeah, time yeah yeah absolutely Excellent. yeah yeah i think that's really unique and with that what would you say like your most popular sort of branding within the business so would you say it's more like your stone island yeah. sort of stretching that way uh, it's, it's ever changing but i mean at that time within lockdown uh, there was a huge nike uh, uh, demand. Yeah. Any Nike, big Nike logo sweatshirts, when I was like a seven day drops, yeah. were, people were logging on Huge. honestly at seven o'clock. Yeah. They were sold out within really? uh, seven Sort of like seven your supreme drops. That's what they felt like. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. And, um, um, but yeah, it, it's ever changing. I, I'd say now the brand we're most passionate about and probably our best selling brand would be uh, Stone Island. Yeah. And you're really successful in selling them brands, aren't you? Sort of pushing them. I know I went on your website uh, yesterday. And I know I looked at your Nike and your Nike variation. I think that's why you're so successful as Groovy Garage yourself, selling your brands. I think because of the variety and rarity of like clothing you have in yeah, a way. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, thank you. We try and be like as as, as varied as possible, so somebody can have a little bit of everything. Yeah. 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 Sure. Brilliant. Hi guys. Uh, come sure. in. Sorry. Right. Sure. No, no, no worries. No worries. Hey. Brilliant. So just uh, lastly, moving on, how do you differentiate from big retailers within sort of Cambridge, London, uh, city areas as yeah. such? Well, I think in what we do, there's so much passion, like so yeah. much desire to, to want to bring something special to places like Cambridge and where our other store is in Kettering. Um, you know, it's a two store business run by three people. And yeah. We're just passionate yes. about exactly what we do. Um, exactly. And I think that yeah, like sets us apart from any normal retailer and as well what we sell is you know we travel all over Europe to get these items and like yeah. people don't you know don't always see the journey that that garment no. taken to get on that rail yeah. and I think like that difference and that passion being able to show that to customers is, is, is probably what, where the difference is. A hundred percent and how did you yourself get into fashion? How did you start off liking different garments and fashion would you say? Probably from like early, early days. Like yeah. When I was like 10, 11, like I used to go and see my nan and granddad in Birmingham and they used to take me to all these shops that are a little small town in Kerry. Yeah. Didn't have. Um, and then moving on from that when it actually got a bit more serious was like just get, like I said earlier, was getting into that London scene. Yeah. Wavy Garms, Duke's Cupboard, getting into garage music, jungle. 100%. Going to raves. And yeah. Like, really like trying to wear your, your best guy. Seeing what other people have as well. Yeah, you see I think it's a lot of it for me was like jealousy as well. Yeah, it becomes sort of. a flex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like um, so, yeah. just lastly, what's like the future of the business? What is the future of the name of Groovy Garage? Uh, yeah, I think. Keeping with like the core values of like the rare and high end vintage, but I think eventually we would like to get into designing our own stuff. Yeah. And sort of collaborating. Making that. your own sort of uh, branding yeah, in a yeah. way. Yeah, we take a lot of inspiration from like a lot of Japanese fashion. Definitely. Um, so like engineered garments, needles, you know, brands like that, and I think Excellent. collaborating that as like a hybrid store. Is yeah. Like we I think that's what a lot of people would like to see, yeah, such yeah. in themselves. I think that would be very unique. Yeah. So like taking it from. So, sort of keeping it vintage, half of the store, and then some of the like the rest of the store. Yeah. Inspiration from new new designs. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Alice, and yeah, the no best worries. of luck to you in the future. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you. Uh, so hi Trevor, thank you for your time today. Um, no if you could just begin telling us like who you are as a person, so okay, what you do. Okay, yeah, well I've been here for the last 20 years, uh, do, doing a job of basically buying the stock, um, merchandising the stock, Brilliant. and uh, ordering um, for customers and special orders and things like that. Excellent, excellent. So uh, to begin with, what is Dyson's and like what does the name mean? Right, well it started off as a family business, we start, the shop opened in 1934 um, and uh, we're an independent retailer still, so we're still, owned by, still a family owned business and uh, we're probably one of the last independents in the area. Oh brilliant, so in the whole of Royston area would yes. you say? Yes, oh, we're, the, we're the last menswear shop. Oh brilliant, actually, yeah. and you sell a wide variety of clothing don't we you? Do. So yes, from we shoes do. to... Yeah, we, we, do some, we do some shoes, uh, we also do suit hire, um, we do all the sort of classic um, sort of clothing, suits, 
jackets, trousers, Brilliant. and we do all the sort of fashionable stuff as well, like Lyle and Scott, Super Dry, Ben Sherman. Excellent. So all the all the pop, all the popular brands yeah. in the yes. in the industry at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Dyson's itself actually get its name? Well, it got its name through Roland Dyson uh, in 1934, opened the shop first. Right, okay. And um, has it been open? How many years has it been open? So it's, it's been open some sort of 80, 80 odd years now. Excellent. So, yeah. And uh, we actually had shops all in the area. So Brilliant. we were in Bishop Stortford, Harlow, um, Bulldog. Right, I see. Letchworth, yeah. So with that going forward in the future with Dyson's, yeah. um, how did you guys cope during the pandemic, would you say? Um, it was tough right. because we were sort of closed like everybody else was for a considerable length of time. But through government grants and what have you, we actually managed to get through it. Oh, brilliant. Well, I'm good. Yeah. I'm very glad to hear. <laughs> yes, in some way. <laughs> Specific clothing brands off the top of your head are sold within this business? Okay, well, we do um, Gabici, we do Farrah, uh, we do Douglas and Graham, um, we're doing Super Dry, we're doing Lyle and Scott, right. we're doing Ben Sherman. So we've got a, a wide variety. Yeah, and I'd say sort of them brands are obviously your most common, most popular go to yeah, brands, especially for me as well, I know. Yes. And yeah. um, how would you say? You, this business especially is, is successful in representing them brands within the market of fashion. Well, we, we make sure that if we haven't got it, we will order it. Brilliant. So we go that extra mile for people. Oh, excellent. Brilliant. So with all Dyson's and you being the representation of Dyson's, yeah. how did you yourself actually get into the fashion industry? Do you like do you enjoy fashion? Yeah, I enjoy fashion very much. Um, I've been in sort of retailing since the mid seventies, um, and I've been through a variety of different shops. But uh, I've been in uh, fashion and what have you since probably about nineteen eighty, in one shape or form or another. Brilliant. And yeah. do you would you say yourself? Do you like? Not necessarily yourself or uh, for customers. Do you like staying up to date with the latest trends in fashion, or do you uh, yourself? I, I think it's essential that you stay up to date with it. Definitely. Yeah. I think all these big brands coming out nowadays. I think like we had a retro phase a couple of years ago, and now that's big, huge yes. now. Yeah, Everyone absolutely. wearing the baggy jeans, the <laughs> back it's in a, stock. Yeah, that, that is the thing with fashion. What goes around comes around. Yeah, and I think it's what you like. I think it's down to personal taste as well. So would you say uh, an outfit represents yourself as your character? I think it does, because when you go to these companies, the range is huge. So you've got to be able to know your market. Definitely. And be able to pick out what you think is going to go. 100%. And um, just a last question for you. What is the future of Dyson's fashion? How will you be as more successful as you are already. Yeah, well I, I think as long as you can keep supplying people with what they want and when they want it and the price they want to pay for it, you'll be successful. I don't say much to the fakers. They gon' see me later when shining like a laser. Everybody now feel like strangers. Ain't got much in common unless my family's getting paper. Wow. All that pretending stop defending me. I get tunnel vision. 
vision when I'm handling my business. Wow. I'll never pretend it ain't defending no. it. I must mind my business while handling my business. Hi, my name's Aaron Richmond from Cambridgeshire, and I'm the owner of 24 Hour Club. I would say 24 Hour Club got its name from my general personal life, building my business while working full time travelling, as the name also has no limits that could be anything adapting to other markets. Here at 24 Hour Club, we sell Japanese product streetwear and our own brands. When I was 15 years old, I can't say how I got into the fashion, as all of my family were in the building trade. Music must have played a part, but other interests in other places is what it all links to. Brands like Nerd, Bape and Farrell, all these links I like are streetwise vibes, which are different so you go with what you're interested in. The future of 24 Hour Club is going into manufacturing with my brand as well as different products as turning my mobile store into a sneaker store. So I'm always trying to live my streetwear fashion dream. Thank you.